and the anointing, but the anointing one. And as we look at this, we want to do this because Jesus is teaching the 12 men, the disciples. He's teaching them, and he's teaching what mighty works. He's bringing about demonstration. Uh, who Jesus, the servant, the son of God, where AD 55 65. Uh, that was when. Where Caesarea Philippi in Galilee, or Galatia. Why? He's pouring into the disciples. How? Teaching in parables. Parables, uh, fable, or an analogy. Uh, he's teaching from a synagogue, or a tabernacle. That extends from chapter number one. When he starts to teach, he leaves nasty. Because you can come on to your own and not be received. He came on to his own, but he was not received for So he got nasty and he went into the uttermost parts and began to teach. But they won't receive you at home. God has a multitude that we will receive you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to leave your own home and country before people can receive you. Well, I live with that for two years. Uh, I've been in ministry since 1994. So I prophesied two years after receiving the Holy Ghost. People will hear you, but not like you, but hear the prophecy. Amen. Amen. So as we go here, we go here to St. Mark chapter 1, verse number 2. You don't even have to turn it, but I'll read it to you. And it says here, And they were astonished at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority. That's the key word, authority. He taught with authority. Mark chapter 1, verse 22, but he also taught with power. And when you have power, it brings about other, other things. And he also, uh, dealing with that text, he also came out of the wilderness. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 says the wilderness for what? 40 days. 40 represent generational or complete or to rule. Well, complete meaning that wilderness God had to process his only begotten. Remember Moses and the children of Israel? 40 years the wilderness? 40 years to be complete. You have to be complete before you can step into the ministry. And then he was tested, but he also went on a 40 day fast. He consecrated himself. That means to die down of the flesh. That goes deep down into your soul to shame. And then your spirit man takes a resurrection because he is the resurrection. There is a completeness that God has bestowed upon all of you that sit into that audience. And this audience. Now he also uh, taught and he began to be um, groomed to the word called fame. Uh, verse 28 says, And immediately his fame spread throughout the region and around Galilee. Now, we have to remember now, God is using him, his only begotten, and then when you are gifted, and even in quote unquote Pastor Courtney, in the black church, when you become gifted, they will fight against you. But then they'll, or evidently, they'll follow the fame of the anointing to set you. They'll follow what you have, but at the same time, they'll fight against yes. what you have. Yes. Your ministry will cause you to be famous. They will put an offering before you and just say, preach this. That's not what God said. You preach what God said and stop looking at the offering. Come on. Yes. Yes. The ministry causes you to go into your gifting. Now, I've interpreted this dream here. You have dreams that you're flying. Some of you have had dreams that you're flying. Well, if you're flying in a dream, that means you're flowing and flying in your gifting. How many understand what I'm saying to you? Uh, it causes a celebrity status. Now, say Mark chapter 1, verse 41. Uh, now, Jesus is still teaching and he's still moving up under the Lord, the power of the Lord. But he also deals with uh, being compassionate. And it says here that Jesus moved with compassion. Now, he's cleansing the lepers, but he's moved with compassion. And then he says, stretch out his hand and touch the man that was full of lepers, and said to him, I am really being cleansed. Look how God is using his son. You can be in ministry, you can be successful. But what we're missing in Christian in 2009 is compassion. Yes. We see people coming that's not saved, we turn our noses up, yes. and scratch our heads, and 
Uh, they don't need to sit next to me. But where is your compassion? If you are filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the evidence of speaking in other tongues, where is your compassion? This is more than just dressed up in a robe. This is more than getting this paper and done up for a conference, Pastor. No more events. We deal with people, we do a conference, but you still have to reach the loss. We all have been cleansed from something. Yes, as your testimony. Where is your compassion? Where is you? Who are you really witnessing to? You feel with the Holy Ghost we speak in a lot of tongues in this day. I've never seen so many apostles and bishops and prophets and prophetess. Oh, don't let them touch you. Where is your compassion? We, we preach and prophesy to the four walls. But we forget about those that are there that are dying. I've been found guilty of that. Now I have to go talk to the hustler and ask him, you know, you know, Jesus loves you. You know, brother, I'm looking too hard for that. You got no tail. Don't say that to me. No, but Jesus loves you in spite of your eyes. He's able to take out a hard stone and make it a hard flesh. That's that compassion coming out of you and pouring into somebody else. He talked with compassion and tenderness. But look at now. Jesus is not haughty. He's not in our prophets. But he reaches out his hand and touches the leper. Yes. And he becomes whole. We are we scared to touch people who've been on crack. We are scared to touch prostitutes and pimps. Now, we don't need to lay hands on people. Pray right here and just pray a prayer where we generate the blessing of the Lord to them. Where is your compassion? What about that brother that's struggling with his identity on the street? You got to shake his hand too. And hug him too. And if you don't hug him, then you become prideful. You are afraid that that spirit in that person will become oppressed. The Holy Ghost purifies. You cannot become demonically oppressed if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You have to still minister. Don't say that. God will tell you, listen, I'll fight for you. I've been fighting for you this long. I'll keep fighting for you. No matter what people say about any one of you in this building under the sound of my voice, God still has compassion. Now, as we go to the other text here, we deal with this that Jesus is still laboring. He's still moving up under the power. He's laboring and he's dealing with the 12 disciples. He's already appointed the 12. And while he's appointing the twelve, he's getting ready to leave the sea. Your shepherd will pour into you before he gets ready to leave the sea. He's dealing with uh, casting out demons, dealing with the unclean, dealing with the ungodly. But he's doing it with compassion. Yes. He's humbling himself and talking to the people and ministering to the people, prophesying to the people. Now the thing about this is, this is before the church. The Lord moving up under the anointing by himself. This is before the book of Acts, where the church has had a stage set. This is before the church. Can you imagine Jesus here with us in this congregation? And we don't have an ounce of compassion. There's another scripture that says in the New Testament that the righteous shall scarcely make it. You mean to tell me I've been speaking in tongues all this time, but scarcely made it in? I've been dancing before God a long time, but scarcely made it in? I've been into a short Pentecostal movement, but scarcely made it in? I've been hugging and helping other people, but your heart is full of iniquity. But that still can't make it into the kingdom. And when we talk about God, in this day, the Lord dealt with me for a while. He said, listen, he said, when the doors begin to open for the ministry that I put in, it's not Randy Newman's ministry, it's my ministry. He said, when I lose you again, he said, tell the people, go back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and go back to the Word, and, and teach them and pour it to the people. We're supposed to be pouring, be poured into by our shepherds who pour into us so we can be equipped and go out and compel others to come. We preach about the church, but we don't do with compassion. 
church. This is supposed to be representing a holy church. It extends from one, God. Now, if we go back here, chapter 5, we have a sister who has a problem in her mind. And this sister here heard about Jesus. But before we go there, we go with Jairus' daughter, who's sick, a damsel. And she's on her deathbed. But before we go there, we're going to go back to the sister who's having problems in her life. Verse 24 says, So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and followed him. Verse 25 says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood of 12 years. 12 represent the government of God. And the government shall rest upon whose shoulders? His shoulders. Look at God revealing himself, unfolding himself. This sister had problems in her body. And it said it had suffered many things for many physicians. This is why when we go to the doctor's office, we don't put our trust in the doctor, but we thank God for the doctors. Uh, we pray over the doctor before we go see the doctor. God gave them the right medicine. God helped them give the right information. She saw many doctors. Seeing people can get you into trouble. She saw that doctor or doctors. And but never grew to be healed. It became worse. It's one thing to give the doctor your Medicaid card, your Medicare card. Charge up give me my medicine, but I still need to be made whole. Yes, yes, yes. God, I hear what you're saying, but you're not serving the same God. I got to go get in contact with God so I can receive my healing. Yes. I hear what you're saying, God, that's nice, but I don't receive it. Because if you are the word, you don't always hear what you're not going to have to say. You will go to God and ask God, what do you say about me? Uh, one of those stripes is on your back. Wasn't that for me? Yes, it was. But she saw the doctors for 12 years and then suffered with that issue. And suffered much. She suffered many positions. It says, she spent all she had. Spent all she had. Can you imagine working a 40 hour job? And all your money go to the doctors. Every penny you got, every penny in a jar goes to the doctor. Your Medicaid card goes to the doctor. Uh, working two jobs and all that money still goes to the doctor. You'll get tired of looking at that doctor. But in between that there, it says that she, all that she had, she spent it. But the worst, and it says, verse 27, it says, she heard about Jesus. And she said, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his mantle. Jesus, full of demonstration, full of power. She touched his mantle. This is a mantle. Those are considered mantles. Can you imagine touching, hearing about the crowd? She heard first. We used to study dirt and gossip, but she heard about somebody passing through the land. Passing through the land. Somebody's uh, world period. Somebody's walking in miracles. Somebody's walking in faith. Her, for her to hear about Jesus, something in her had to want to long for what he had or what was in him or what was in him. He was in now the one I. That's one, that one is the one that God was pleased with his son, with whom I am well pleased. But look at the presence. She touched his clothes and touched something. Touched him. And it says here, now for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Now to be made well is to be made complete or whole. Now and then it says here, and immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Now, that's just had to do with that for 12 years, but look at the healing. She was healed or repaired. Or that illness was a plague or an affliction. And what that Jesus was his integrity or virtue. Can you imagine getting in contact with Jesus and he made everything in you whole? Well, when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he made you whole. Some other deliverances took more time than the others. Amen. Now, as this here, she did this. She was made home. 
And Jesus immediately knowing in himself the power had gone out of him. Turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Yes. Can you imagine him walking around here feeling the multitude, dealing with teaching? And then the multitude walking around him and somebody touched you. And the anointing leaves you. But Jesus being prophetic and had a king deserve it, knew who touched him. Yeah. He knew who touched him. He asked a question with a question. He knew who had touched him. He's the healer. He is the chief physician. Yes. The top doctor. Yes. You get in contact with Jesus through prayer, through supplication, through fasting. He wants to know who touched me. Jesus wants to touch all of us and make us whole. We share so much with each other in Christendom. We never get in contact with Jesus. What we deal with with the doctor's diagnosis in our lives, we go to the telephone quicker than we go to Jesus. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says that thou shalt call I shall show you great and mighty things, which you know it's not. It's more than just going to see a therapist or a psychiatrist. It's getting in contact with Jesus. You have to understand it costs much to serve him. It costs much to seek him. You give up much on serving God. And when God's poor gets you like that, you leave with mantles and mandates. Some of us have mantles. Some of us have mandates. God has called some of us like he's dealing with this woman here. She had issues. Blood in her body. Not fully flowing. But she heard about some Jesus passing by and wanted to touch. That's faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith will draw you to Jesus and cause you to be made whole. The just shall live by God. Faith. But if you draw back, he will not have any parts with you. As believers, we are not to draw back. We are to go forward. So God can make us whole. And in this day and time, we have people who are saying, and this is not judging. People are saved but feel crooked in their spirits. Saints bending over feel like they just can't make it anymore, Pastor Phil. You see people in dreams standing in the natural, but in dreams you see them in wheelchairs. Something crippling them in the physical, but you see it in the spirit. You have saints in the household of faith, but more sicknesses and diseases, more diabetes. Sister Kimberly. 
This is not an easy walk. What Jesus had in him is, is, is within us. Everybody's not going to receive you, see? Everybody won't hear you. Everybody does not believe that you can get in contact with God. In spite of the educational passes in Sixth grade education. What I do, just a moment. But when I receive the Holy Ghost, God taught me how to pray. Pulled me to the side of the prayer and taught me how to get in contact with him. The mothers of old pulled me to the side of the apostolic church and said, you need to learn and start calling on Jesus. You feel with his presence and his Holy Ghost? You need to start calling on the name of the Lord. It has nothing to do with your children. Men need to pray and pray always and never faint. In your prayer life, there's a there is a covering. There is a realm of the spirit between you and God. Yes. God is calling us back to the movement of prayer. This is more than just preaching and speaking in tongues and prophecy. Yes. You need to develop a prayer life and get in contact with God. Right. God is calling us to be made whole. He's coming back to a church without spot or river or such blemish. What church do you think he's coming back from? We're supposed to be a part of that church. Love-wash believers. God is on his way back. Look at the news. Look at the history. Yes, yes. Look at the famine in the land. Yes, yes. Yes, his sister was healed. Well, God needed to heal some people right here on earth. And he will heal us. And he will use us as great testimonies. So what happened? She fell to his knees and began to confess. When you have a strong presence or an anointing in your life, people will fall to their knees and begin to reverence you. But they only reverence the God that is in your life. Yes, yes, yes. I don't want nobody reverencing me. And I don't believe in living a sloppy life. Amen. You want folks to reverence you, you just got to finish trusting last week. I just can't see myself doing that, telling people off. I told them off of one of the anointing. No, you didn't. There is a balance between the flesh and the spirit. Every day he's turning away at me from suffering. We may not tell you everything what we're going through, but we need to get in contact with God and tell him what's really troubling us, what's really going on in us, what we need to be cleansed from. She had issues, we had issues. This is a one-on-one -on -one contact. This is a one day at a time. Walk. You don't get this overnight. No. This is not an instant gratification walk. No. No. Holiness has to be perfected in us because we still come from the world. Yes, you don't get this overnight, Pastor Boy. No. You've been in this long enough. You can tell me better than I can tell myself. Yeah. There is a suffering that you have to go through in this life. There is a process. Twelve years she dealt with the issue, a process. You will not be made whole overnight. The mothers of all say every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Yes. That means there is a process of your deliverance. Yes. He's still cleansing and wiping us from residue from the world. He's still leaving me a pastor from the things that I've done as a child. I don't look at it no more. If I look at a picture, that should make me break down because I've done that already. You should be able to look at Jesus and think, Jesus, I thank you for making me home. Yes. Yes. I should never go see a therapist if I put something I dealt with when I was five and I'm 40 and filled with the Holy Ghost. I know that's right. I should never go see a therapist about blowing my own brain out. Suicide. I've been there before. Wanted to scratch my wrist and end my own life because of the loneliness of the ministry. And God spoke to me that day. He said, I want you to go into consecration because that's nonsense. I put something in you. I put my work in you. I have invested in you. Your life is not worth taking. Suicidal. Because somebody won't receive you. They may not receive you now. But some years down the line, they will see. Yes. Yes. Suicide is not from God, that's the devil. Yes. He wants to use all of us. Every issue that you've ever wrestled with tonight, God is pouring a completeness over your lives. Just like I said, you may be feeling but 
this for a purpose. God lets you see what people really got in there. See the pews? He let you see firsthand. A promise is not always a promise. People can promise you anything to you. And they never show. Oh, brother, baby, you know I love you. Where were you? Do you love a God in me? I love a God in you. Where were you? Jesus. You made not that promise, not just to me, but you made a 